Are the United States, the UK, safer now than we were before we went into Iraq? In my view, yes, because you've got to ask what would have happened if we'd left Saddam there. The sanctions regime was crumbling, frankly, which was why they were trying to put together a new sanctions regime. We know now from the Iraq survey group that Saddam retained every intention um, and also the intellectual know-how to restart the nuclear and the chemical weapons program. And he would have had several years of very large oil revenues. So he would have had the money and he would have had the intent. And meanwhile, we would have backed off. Now, you know, you can never, you, you're always speculating and hypo, it's a hypothesis as to what would have happened. But my view being out here in the region is that the danger would have been that he would have ended up, in a sense, competing with Iran, both to re lead the extreme elements within Islam and also, of course, proliferating um, nuclear and chemical weapons. There have been the critics who said that the destruction of his power in Iraq emboldened Iran and made them even more powerful and a greater threat. How do you respond to that criticism? Because it's been out there. Yeah, it, it has been out there, and it's a very important um, criticism, an important criticism to respond to. As I always say to people, when, when people say, well, look, Saddam was the strong man that was the break on Iran, I say, yeah, that was our policy through the 1980s. We supported Saddam against Iran. What was the result? The result was an Iran-Iraq war in which there were a million casualties. He developed during the course of that and used chemical weapons. He emerged out of that and invaded Kuwait. The answer to Iran is not to get another extremist, arm them, and try and get him to be the break on them. The answer is actually to allow people in Iraq to have the same freedom that we do to elect their government and to have then next door to Iran a majority Shia country that is a country that is democratic. Now it's very fragile, it's very difficult, um, but the interesting thing, and this is part of the evidence actually given to this inquiry, is that today in Iraq the political parties are going across the sectarian divide and actually the worst thing for people standing in the election in Iraq is to be seen as too close to Iran. Now I think that is a better way to deal with this than to say let's get another dictator and put them up against this dictator. But the very best way of dealing with their extreme ideas is to put before people a better idea. And one thing, you know, I spend a lot of time out in this region. The biggest myth there is is that people in this region, for cultural reasons, for reasons of tradition and history, and there's a whole elite in the West that sits here and say this, these people don't really want democracy. They don't really want freedom. They don't quite know what to do with it. They're, they're, they're not really capable of understanding these concepts. It's nonsense. You, know, you, you, you talk to the ordinary Palestinian here, what they want is to better elect their government. They're no, believe it or not, they're no different from us.